This is where we're going to hear from Tim Ayres and Andrew Charlton and they'll be launching the government's national AI plan today and there's a lot in this. It needs to look at energy intensity. It needs to look at security, guardrails, uh, IR and the list goes on. Joining me now is retired senior Australian Army officer who now runs Security and Defence Plus think tank in London, Ian Langford. Ian, thanks so much for your time. If I could ask you, you know, this overall umbrella question first and that is if we're getting an AI strategy, what should it look like? Well, thanks, Laura. Thanks for having us again. Uh, Minister Ayres is due to announce this policy with great fanfare. And the government's already released its indications around, you know, efforts to capture economic opportunities, to think about benefits and about online safety. Where I think AI and policy needs to really focus in on how it leverages that technology in terms of productivity and growth. So we're seeing globally uh, that the AI investment and the hyperscaling of data and technology, particularly around onshoring and bringing sovereignty to those opportunities is where the policy needs to be. And what I'm looking forward to is understanding how the government intends to turbocharge productivity on how it tends to bring the future into the Australian workplace and how it seeks to secure growth pathways so that this country can sustain a wealth trajectory that this technology opportunity will bring. Yeah, uh, and how far away do you think uh, we are from being competitors in in this space. I mean, we see the US, uh, they're doing all they can uh, to find this excess power to power these data centres. Of course, all the tech bros, uh, really the engine room of the US economy. Uh, we're mere passengers at this point. <laughs> we have lots to do, uh, whether it be energy policy around finding another 12% of global power generation that needs to come into this country, either locally or offshore, to bring power and infrastructure to these data centres. We also need to think about how we connect into the rest of the world. So that relates to critical undersea infrastructure like sea cables and how Australia manages and secures its interests to remain connected to the rest of the world. Uh, the other piece is there's a lot of focus on industrial relations, on, on protecting what I call analogue or old practices. Uh, that's important in terms of social licence, but what's really important are the reforms that are necessary to reskill our workforce and make them future ready. The challenge is AI will be a once in a generation opportunity. If this country doesn't lead on being a leader in so far as bringing the technology to bear as a component of national power, it will get left behind and the risk will be significant, not so much for our generation, but certainly for our children and you know people living into the latter part of this century. Oh, Ian, if you wouldn't mind, stand by. We're going to take you live to this cool. announcement now. You want to listen to this as much as I do and our viewers. This is Tim Ayres announcing this national plan. Collaborating, working together on projects, sharing experiences, um, supported by their local member, Andrew Charlton, the member for Parramatta, uh, doing incredible work. And it's just given me so much optimism and enthusiasm this morning for this enormous task of making sure that Australia's strategy with artificial intelligence includes everybody, everybody in Australia. Uh, today we'll be launching Australia's National Artificial Intelligence Plan. It is directed towards three national interest priorities. Firstly, making sure that Australia captures the opportunity, the economic opportunity, the productivity opportunity, making sure that we're making AI technology here as well as taking the best of artificial intelligence technology uh, into Australia to do important national interest things. Uh, it's also, secondly, about making sure that we share the benefits amongst small workplaces and big workplaces across all of our suburbs and our regions uh, across Australia. And finally, it's about making sure that we keep Australians safe. That's why we announced the AI Safety Institute a capability at the heart of government that's about testing new models, analysing threats and challenges, working across government with our regulators, our security and intelligence agencies, uh, our, our financial regulators as well, to make sure that we keep Australians safe and evolve our approach to this technology in the national interest. I want to hand over to Andrew Charlton, who will have a, a more to say about this important day for Australia. Uh, making sure that we've got a clear framework for the investment community, for Australian regulators, 
and for Australians themselves as we build confidence in the adoption of this important new technology. Andrew. Thanks very much, Tim. Well, it's terrific to have Tim here in Parramatta at the Western Sydney Tech Innovators. Uh, Westy is an organisation that is grassroots and community-based. It has more than 1,700 people who come together to learn about AI and adopt it in their daily lives and business. And it's fitting that we're here because the plan that the government is releasing today is all about people. Making sure that That's where we leave Andrew Charlton. He is a Labor MP. He is, of course, part... He's a Cabinet Secretary, and that is his local electorate there. This is a big part of... Uh, well, he's a big part of announcing this national AI strategy. I want to get back to our guest now because uh, we have a, a, an expert in this field. Ian uh, Langford, back with us. Ian, great to see you. Um, I mean, we didn't get much detail there. Announced with much fanfare, doing it at the Western Sydney Hub. Um, but basically the three key principles. It is capturing and seizing uh, opportunities, spreading the benefits, keeping Australians safe. Now, they're the government um, catchphrases. As a broad framework, is that a, is that a good one? Well, it's a useful starting point. But again, unless we match that level of ambition with things like uh, the ability to allow private equity to flow into this country to enable the establishment of data centres for the ability of our uh, technology industry to be able to generate, you know, its own sovereign algorithms. I mean, countries that are getting ahead have their own AI large language models. They don't leverage others. And again, there's a social licence dimension to this. I think most Australians would like to see an Australian version of ChatGPT that would be warehoused here, that we could use in our own national interests and not have to leverage friends and partners right now, but also other entities operating uh, in this industry that are perhaps less transparent than we would like. So where are the job skilling programs? Where is the ability for superannuation funds and private equities to invest? Where is the effort to drive down regulation? And where are the initiatives to bring energy policy and critical infrastructure into the problem of generating enough power to onshore data centres so that we can own our own digital future? So there's big questions over who should be allowed to develop and operate data centres in Australia. Of course, TikTok has come up with a, with a bit of a, a brick wall in front of it. What should be the threshold here? The Foreign Investment Review um, Board uh, considerations, guardrails, are they right for these, this setting? Well, I think right now in relation to TikTok and the fact that the 12 months uh, since its largest application with the FERB is still pending, is a pretty good indication that security is a key parameter in terms of who we choose to partner with in these important technology initiatives. So um, if one thinks about TikTok uh, and its ownership as an entity, and again, it has different subsidiaries and different companies, but there's some point where it's domiciled through the Cayman Islands mm -hmm. and certainly its parent company, which has members of the Chinese Communist Party as part of its board uh, lay down, uh, does bring some concern in terms of the ability of that system to be able to conduct influence operations on behalf of the People's Republic of China, but also, you know, what happens to the data that it's harvesting in terms of social licence and, frankly, uh, privacy provisions around individuals and communities. So uh, we are right to be concerned. If you think about the 2020 Huawei decision, which was to not give that Chinese company essentially the keys to our digital back doors. I think unless that company is more transparent and able to explain how it manages data and privacy and how it thinks about the interests of other countries, then we are right uh, to be cautious. Uh, in relation to other companies such as Google, Microsoft, Amazon, I mean, they are entities that we probably do need to partner with yeah. insofar as the kind of hyperscale that they bring to this technology because the window for Australia to be able to lead on this technology and derive benefit is in the next three to five years, and this can't wait. Well said, Ian. Thanks so much for your time today. Let's return to questions now. Uh, we are seeing a couple of questions being thrown at, at Tim Ayres and Andrew Charlton, a couple on copyright, business responsibility. Let's listen in. So why are these platforms effectively getting a free run under the new plan? That's, that's why we have introduced the Artificial Intelligence Safety Institute a capability at the heart of government to work with our intelligence agencies, our policing agencies, to test new models, to monitor what's going on in the social media landscape, to work with the eSafety Commissioner, 
to make sure that our approach is fit for purpose and relevant every day. This government has demonstrated we're absolutely up to the task of cracking down hard where there's harms in the digital landscape. The eSafety Commissioner and the government cracked down hard on deep fake uh, porno pornographic images. Uh, we cracked down hard uh, in other areas of uh, social media. We're uh, making sure that we're protecting our kids from social media harms and we'll be watching very closely uh, the interaction of artificial intelligence with social media and other digital platforms uh, because of all of its implications for our kids, for our society, for our families uh, and for our national security. What would a threshold point be for an intervention? Because obviously part of the big reason of removing those frameworks or those guardrails were to give the industry itself a little bit more leverage and leeway. So what would the threshold point be for the government to intervene on an AI algorithm and say that it's effectively inspiring or yeah. drawing extremism well, out? Well, 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 it's the responsibility of the AI Safety Institute and the portfolio agencies and the intelligence community and our security agencies to monitor those developments and we will not hesitate to crack down hard when it's required. Uh, the, the, the motivation for the approach that we've taken is in no small part Australian, for, for the fact that Australian law applies now to all of these technologies. Uh, and we want a very clear line of sight on the responsibilities that agencies have now uh, to, uh, to deliver. Uh, we want accountability and we want absolute clarity and that's what this framework delivers. Will it be an unknown entity until we reach a point where that intervention happens or do you already have an idea of what particular examples that already exist in some of those algorithms may constitute uh, a breach or, or require an intervention? Well, I'm very confident that they are... The, that the, sorry. <laughs> that the AI, I'm very confident that the AI Safety Institute will do its work will have the expertise and capability at the heart of government to work across government. This is a capability question. Uh, this is a responsiveness question. And this well-funded safety institute is going to support every part of government to, uh, to deliver on their work. Anything else for me? Cool bananas. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cool bananas. There you go.